Hello grade 10s, welcome to this lesson on charge conservation. Charge conservation simply means that charge cannot be created or destroyed. Or more formally, we can state the principle of conservation of charge as follows. The net charge of an isolated system remains constant during any physical process. Let's use some examples in which objects are charged and then discharged to understand charge conservation better. We already know that we can charge objects if we move electrons from one object to another. When we move electrons from a neutral object, the object becomes positively charged. We have charged the object positively. The removed electrons can't disappear. They have to go to another object. If a neutral object receives these electrons, it becomes negatively charged. We have charged it negatively. That is how objects become electrically charged. What does electrical discharge mean? We experience electrical discharge in our everyday lives. People who live in dry areas know that when they rub their feet against a carpet and then touch something like a door handle, they feel a shock. Girls with long hair might hear crackles and maybe even see sparks when they brush their hair. And of course, we all know about lightning. All of these are examples of discharge. What is discharge and why does it happen? In another movie, we discussed that neutral, positive and negatively charged objects have different charged states. We also learned that the extent of charging also affects charged states. For example, a slightly positively charged object also has a different charged state to a very positively charged object. And we learned that extent of charge is measured in coulombs, which we shorten as the symbol C. Now let's use this knowledge to explain electrical discharge. Two objects which do not have the same charged state as one another have a difference in charged state, which creates a potential difference, also called a PD, between them. And this potential difference may cause a discharge. The reason for this is that the discharge removes the difference in charge states and the potential difference between the two objects and so makes the system more stable. What actually happens in discharge? An electric discharge is the movement of electrons from an object which is more negative to one which is less negative. Let's apply this to explain why we might get a shock after we rub our feet on a carpet. In this simulation, we see that electrons are rubbed off the carpet onto the man. He is now charged. There is a potential difference between the man and his surroundings, so discharge can occur. The door handle is an electric conductor, so when the man gets near it, electrons rush toward it in a spark. The man is now neutral again. He is discharged. Let's get Keke to demonstrate discharge for us. Now, when charges jump from one charged object to another, we see this as a spark and hear it as a crackle. Let me demonstrate. Watch what happens when an earthed, uncharged metal sphere is brought near to the positively charged dome of the van der Graaff generator. Can you see that a spark jumps across the space between the charged metal dome and the metal sphere? As each spark jumps across, you should hear a clicking sound or crackle. This spark is a form of electrical discharge. Negatively charged electrons on the neutral sphere are attracted to the positively charged metal dome. If the attraction is strong enough, they leap across the gap from the sphere to the dome. These electrons move in a stream through the air, heating it up and releasing light and sound energy at the same time. When they arrive on the metal dome, they neutralize the large positive charge there. If the van der Graaff generator is left on, the positive charge builds up on the metal dome again and there is another electrical discharge, and so it goes on. The reason that electrical discharge or spark can occur again and again is that the metal sphere is connected to the earth. This means that negatively charged electrons can move from the earth onto the metal sphere to replace the ones that have jumped across to the metal dome. There is therefore a continuous supply of electrons 
Thanks, Keke. The equipment Keke used is similar to that shown in this picture. Notice how this metal sphere is on a stand which insulates it from Earth. Let's imagine we have two identical metal spheres like this, both on insulated stands. We charge them to different extents. Then, either we bring them close enough that they discharge by means of a spark through the air, or we join them with a conducting wire so that they can discharge through the wire without a spark. Let's work through some examples of what would happen with different combinations of charged spheres. Two identical insulated metal spheres discharge. What is each one's final charge if their initial charges were positive 4 coulombs and negative 4 coulombs? We can represent these two spheres like this. Notice that four of the positive signs don't have corresponding negative signs in the positive 4 coulomb sphere and four negative signs don't have corresponding positive signs on the negative four coulomb sphere. Remember that this is just a way to represent information to help us think about it more clearly. These two spheres have different charge states, so there is a potential difference between them which tends to make electrons move in a discharge that removes the charge difference and the potential difference between them. In this discharge, Four coulombs of electrons move from the negatively charged sphere to the positively charged sphere. Notice how we have represented these four coulombs of charge. They are now not on the sphere anymore. They have moved to the sphere. In this case, the discharge has neutralized both the spheres. They each have just as many positive as negative charges. We could have worked this question out using a formula. It is important that you remember that this formula only applies for two identical spheres on insulating stands. Both spheres end with the same final charge and this is equal to the average of the initial charges of the two spheres. We find the average charge for these two spheres. We add plus 4 and minus 4 coulombs and divide by 2. The answer is 0 coulombs. This is the final charge on each sphere after discharge. In our next example, the initial charges of the spheres are positive 4 and 0 coulombs. These two spheres do not have the same charge state, so there is a potential difference between them. The discharge of electrons will move from the more negative to the less negative of the two spheres. Neither of these spheres is negative, but that doesn't matter. A neutral object is more negative than a positive object. This sphere is neutral and this one is positive. The neutral sphere is more negative than the positive sphere. So electrons move from the neutral sphere to the positively charged sphere. This makes the sphere more positive than it used to be and the sphere they go to less positive than it used to be. Let's use the equation to calculate the final charge on each of these spheres. Plus 4 plus 0 equals plus 4. We divide this by 2. Each sphere has a charge of plus 2 coulombs after discharge. Notice that both spheres now have the same charge state. There is no potential difference between them anymore. Now we have an example where both spheres start negatively charged. One has a charge of negative 6 and the other negative 4 coulombs. Although both are negative, they do not have the same charge state because they are not negative to the same extent. So there is a potential difference between the spheres. So discharge can occur from the more negative to the less negative sphere. This discharge removes the potential difference and difference in charge state between the two spheres. Let's confirm this with the equation. Minus 6 plus minus 4 equals minus 10. We divide this by 2. Each sphere has a charge of negative 5 coulombs after discharge. In our last example, both spheres have positive charges to start with, positive 8 and positive 2 coulombs. Since they are charged to different extents, they differ in charged state. There is a potential difference between them. Discharge can occur. 
Remember that the more positively charged an object is, the less negativity is. 8 minus 2 is 6, so there is a difference of 6 coulombs between the spheres. To spread these 6 coulombs evenly between them, 3 coulombs of electrons move from this sphere to this one. The sphere, which was positive 8 coulombs, is now 3 coulombs less. The charge is now positive 5 coulombs. The sphere, which was positive 2 coulombs, is now 3 coulombs more. Its charge is now also positive 5 coulombs. Let's check if the equation gives us the same answer. Plus 8 plus 2 coulombs equals plus 10. We divide this by 2. Each sphere has a charge of positive 5 coulombs after discharge. And that brings us to the end of this lesson and this series. Don't forget to check out other videos in this series, especially the task video. Also look at the Mindset website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.